United States of America. We thank you for the many freedoms and blessings that we get as citizens of the United States. We ask that you be with the many, many women overseas who are defending this great country and the veterans who have given the ultimate sacrifice so that we may enjoy the freedoms that we have today. We ask that you be with the many, many women in law enforcement, EMS, fire, as well as other branches of public safety who keep us all safe. Uh, we ask that you be with each and every one of us as we go our separate ways after tonight's business is conducted. And we ask that you keep everyone safe. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. This time I'd like to ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, it's good to see we've got a good crowd here tonight. Uh, good to see that people take interest in what's going on in their local government. Uh, we'd like to welcome everyone here and those watching at home. Uh, first item of business tonight will be to uh, call the meeting to order, and I'll do that this time. I'll call to order the 2020 February 11th meeting of the Hart County Board of Commissioners. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here. And first item of business we'll take tonight will be to approve the agenda. Are there any changes? I'd like to make one addition under okay. uh, 12B. It's the uh, amendment to the contract with the Corps of Engineers on the parks. Uh, they called me and wanted to combine them. Right now we've got two. They wanted to buy them and do with those two together if we'd have one expiration date on them both. Okay. Any other changes? No, sir. I'll make a motion. We'll approve the agenda. I had one question okay. on uh, real executive session. We need to add real estate. I've got an update on one of the things we talked about from the last okay. meeting. <clears throat> so, with the addition to item 12, the amendment to the Corps of Engineer Parks uh, contract, and then the addition of real estate under executive session, can I get a motion that we approve the agenda as amended? I make that motion. I have a motion by Commissioner Teasley and a second by Commissioner Carter. Any more discussion? Any public comment on the agenda? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. <clears throat> Next item of business will be to approve the minutes of the previous meetings. Uh, in your packet, you've got the January 28, 2020 regular meeting minutes. Uh, if there are no changes or correction, could I get a motion that we approve these minutes as printed? So I'll make a second. I have a motion by Commissioner Carter, a second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? Public comment on the minutes? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is remarks by invited guests, committees, and authorities. At this time, I'd like to recognize Mr. Frankie Gray, our clerk of court. And uh, I'll turn the floor over to you. Chairman Dorsey, board, Terrell Partain, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, there's many boards that volunteer and work for Hart County. Uh, if I stood here and tried to name them, I'd forget a lot of them, but there's a bunch of them. And there's a lot of people that donate their time to Hart County, and I, for one, appreciate that. But one board in particular that I have the honor and privilege of working with is the Hart County Board of Equalization. Ever since uh, the governor and legislation put that task on the clerk of courts in the, in the state since 2011, I've got to work alongside them, and uh, they are a great group of people. They're an outstanding group of men and women, and they do an excellent job for Hart County. I can report to you as clerk of court, they do a great job. And tonight, I have most of them here. Chairperson Ruth uh, Rosenberg is on the back row. Co-chairperson Glenda Osborne. Kathy Hefford is here. I also have another member, Ronnie Weaver. My chief deputy, Connie Brown, is here to support them. And on the front row here, we have Ms. Uh, Ann Rogler and Mr. Judd Bailey. And the reason we're here tonight is I want to honor, because we, we just don't um, get to point out the sacrifices and the, the duties that they do on a daily basis. About five or six weeks a year, these ladies and gentlemen on this board, they work uh, for you, the citizens of Hart County, doing these tax appeals. And Mr. Judd Bailey, Ms. Ann Roller has decided to retire, and uh, I wanted to recognize them. Uh, and, and on behalf of the Board of Commissioners, myself, and Mr. Terrell Partain, uh, we have a small token of our appreciation in a plaque here tonight. 
And I'll start with Miss Ann Rodler. Let me get my glasses on. <laughs> Presented to Ann Rodler in appreciation for your service to the taxpayers of Hart County, 818 2016 to 1231 2019. Hart County Equalization Member, job well done. Sincerely, Frankie Gray, Clerk of Court, Hart County Board of Commissioners. Miss Ann, uh, when we inherited the uh, Board of Equalization, she was the secretary. She later became a board member. But one thing that stands out about Ann, like the rest of these board members that are here tonight, is we were doing a revaluation. We had 2,800 plus appeals uh, that year, and Miss Ann was the secretary. And I commend her for a job well done. So let's give her a hand, please. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Judson Bailey. Mr. Bailey has been on here quite a while. Uh, he is a, a seasoned veteran on the Board of Equalization. And um, presented to Arnold Judson Bailey in appreciation for your service to the taxpayers of Hart County, 8 2010 to 1231-2019. Hart County Equalization member, job well done. Sincerely, Frankie Gray, Hart County Board of Commissioners. Thank you, Judd. Give me my Let me just say one quick word. I know you're busy, but I, I just want to brag on uh, uh, our clerk of court uh, by Georgia law. Uh, <clears throat> he is our supervisor of the Board of Equalization. He's done an excellent job and made a, everything a whole lot smoother. And, of course, his predecessor, Bill Holland. I have been that long enough to remember him too, also. <laughs> and, and each member that we've had, I can't remember a single one I haven't enjoyed working with. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I just want to say thank you to Frankie also. Um, he's very easy to work with, and there's an excellent team in place. And um, that revalve mm. had some bad <laughs> memories from that, but we got through it and we got it done. And I think most people are pleased. And not everyone's happy when they leave, but they do appreciate the opportunity to come in and voice their opinion and at least be heard. So it's been an honor to work for our county and for Frankie. Can y'all come up and get a picture with the Hartwell Sun? And while they're coming up, uh, Chairman Dorsey, if I could, this is a good time to solicit help. Uh, we have uh, two openings on the Board of Equalization. We do have a young uh, lady, retired uh, principal here in our school system with about 38 years. She is going before the grand jury next week to see if she gets appointed. And so I have one opening. So if any of you that are retired would like to jump on board with us, we will accept you. Please come and see me. Mm. It pays $50 a day. Mm. And you don't work every day of the five or six weeks we work. Again, thank you. I appreciate the job y'all done. Thank you. Mm. Thank you, boy. Mm. You come up front? Yeah, come up. Yeah. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. Okay. Uh, we'll move on to the uh, next uh, invited guest. Uh, as part of our initiative for this year, uh, any group that gets funding from taxpayer money, we're inviting to the meetings, and we started with the, the A group. Um, we've uh, had Archway, we've had Animal I mean, the uh, Airport Authority. Tonight, we're going to talk about the Animal Shelter. And is Tammy here? Okay, if you'll come forward and.
tell us a little bit about what's going on with the animal shelter? My name is Tammy Jordanes. I'm the director of Northeast Georgia Animal Shelter. Um, we are continuing um, to try to save as many lives as possible. Um, we've been right along track with as many intakes as what we normally have between the two counties. Um, we've had several programs. We got a grant from Walmart in Hartwell, and we offered it for low-cost spay neuter to Hart and Franklin County residents for cats. Um, just because we've had such a problem with cat intakes and kittens and everything, um, we were able to offer it for $20. Um, it went above and beyond what we expected, and we sold out in the first day that we opened it. Um, so we were very pleased with that. Um, we had offered every vet that's on our certificates uh, for like when an animal gets adopted to, to participate, but we only had two that wanted to participate at this time because they are also doing it at a discounted rate. We did an emergency uh, rabies clinic um, in January just because of the several cases of the rabbit animals that we had had um, and were able to offer um, rabies vaccines for $5 for one year. Uh, we will do another one in the spring um, to also to try to help out the communities with a discounted cost. Um, last year. Last year we took in 2,532 animals to the shelter and um, we were able to save about 84% of them. And that's a huge difference from like 2012. Um, just going back to like 2012, we took in 2,648 animals and out of them we were only, they, we were only able to save about 37%. So it's a huge difference. Um, from working with rescues, adoptions, you know, promoting spay neuter, <laughs> and things like that, I think we're really able to save and get a lot of injured ones and stray ones off of the streets. Do you have any questions for me? What are your intake totals? Are they going up, staying the same? And I'm, I'm asking specifically about Hart County because um, that's, I mean, that's what we're paying for, so. Yes, sir, um, they are staying about the same. Um, animal control does bring in a pretty good bit more you know, since Drew with Animal Control, it's really helped out a lot. He's keeping us pretty full. Okay. As far as um, you hear these things, hear these stories uh, on the radio station where you guys are needing supplies. I mean, I'm just I'm kind of like, I want to get a full comprehensive update of what's going on, the intake, uh, adoptions, that kind of thing, so we can see a true picture of what is going on at the animal shelter. We used to get intake numbers. I haven't seen those lately. We we we'll get them quarterly. Yeah, get them quarterly. Okay. okay. Yeah, we we send them out quarterly. Um, I have last year's right here. If okay. you want them, they'll be fine. This is the ones from last year that kind of explains it. It even breaks it down mm -hmm. between the city and the county. Thank you. So Hart County total animals uh, were 905, um, 203 were from animal control, and 702 were from citizens. That's interesting. <coughs> yeah, this is kind of information we, we kind of like to see as far as what's going on. Um, just for everybody out there, of the and th these are some good data points. Of the 2,532 animals surrendered for all the jurisdictions to Northeast Georgia Animal Shelter, only 132 or 5.2% were spayed or neutered. Um, so as long as we uh, have these situations, we're gonna continue to have uh, issues with, with an animal shelter and having to, to deal with the things that you guys have to deal with. and. Uh, that's kind of why we added that in there too. It's neat, you know, it's, it's nice to see that and, you know, to see how many and how much it increases each year, hopefully with the low cost pay neuter programs that, you know, that each group's able to offer that, you know, hopefully we can raise that number. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Does uh, Franklin County run about the same as us? It does. Just their numbers is on there too. Theirs is a little bit more. You can keep that if you want that. You want to keep it? 
We got a copy, Terrell. Hit that and give it to us. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. My, else? my question is mm -hmm. Is the amount of animals you take in, is it growing per year or going down? Or? I think it's kind of staying the same. You know, there's other local rescue groups and things that, you know, that help out also. Um, I mean, it's pretty much stayed within a couple hundred each year. Okay, and my next question is this. <clears throat> what could people do in the county to eliminate such a drastic amount of animals? To me, drastic, 2,500 animals, a lot of animals, that somebody just throws away or whatever. And what could we do to eliminate or curb that? Spay neuter. Well. You know, spay neuter, that's why we've tried to, you know, apply for any grant that we can to help out with spaying and neutering. I think that lady out there had something she wanted to say. You have to come to the podium, please. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm Don Hart County Humane Society. Uh, one thing I think that would help is um, animal control in the county is only for dogs. And cats are a huge, huge problem. Cats are um, a lot of times, most times, feral. So getting them caught up, I, I get calls every day. People can't catch these feral cats and get them to the shelter. And they're a danger. So if we could somewhere down the road get that in implemented in with our animal control and get those cats caught up and not having so many unwanted cats. And also, tell me if I'm wrong, Tammy, or right, but um, the rescues will come and get the puppies. But we need to help um, our residents, the Humane Society feels, to um, keep their dogs and their cats and not so much turn them in. Um, be more responsible with their, their animals and uh, have less of them coming into the shelter by um, encouraging them to be responsible. But cats are a big problem. If we could have animal control in Hart County for cats, that would be a blessing. Yeah, I actually mentioned the part about our own don't necessarily allow for cats. I mean, it's, it's in there, but it don't specifically say what you can do with them. Yeah, they need to go to the shelter. We're, the Humane Society is working on a new spay neuter. We've been, we've had a spay neuter program for 10 years, ongoing every day of the year. But um, we're, uh, people in our community had low cost or low income. But we're going to um, have a new program coming forward this year, and we're going to have it a lot, um, a lot cheaper for cats, spay and neuters, um, so, which will cost us more money. But hopefully, that will, um, you know, bring them down a whole lot. Like I said, there's rescues that will come and take the puppies, but nobody comes and gets the cats or the kittens, and kittens are sick. You can't get a decent adoption fee for a kitten but, or a cat. People, when you could get them free out of the penny saver or the back of a newspaper to get a cat, people don't want to pay $45 or $60 for a cat that's fixed. So it's a bad, and it's raising awareness. So that's what I would, our humane study would like to see is animal control for cats. And, we're just continuing to raise awareness. Thank you for your time. Uh, well, I got another question. Uh, since you started talking about the ordinance, well, this is just an idea. But would y'all on the Humane Society and Animal Shelter be willing to take a look at the ordinance and, and give us some ideas and pointers on it? Absolutely. If that we would, would be okay to. with the board. We would love to. Absolutely. And you know, when Animal Control first came to Hart County. Um, the Humane Society try to help out with quick cages and stuff like that. Anything we could do to get them off the street, we would, we would love to um, be involved with that. We'd love to look at the ordinance. Well, I'd like to see y'all do that if it's okay with everybody else. On the board. Well, I think you got to involve the Sheriff's Department, too, because right. that's an enforcement right. arm. I mean, you can't just yep. have one, one group. Well, I'm not telling them they're going to write the ordinance. They're going to give us some pointers. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would think you would want to in, uh, invite the magistrate. Uh, I remember, you know, a lot of people see a lot of um, things the way they are now need work, and they do. But I remember the day when they were bad, when there was no animal shelter. Oh, yeah. When there was no animal shelter, there was no rescue, there was no spay neuter program. So I'm proud to see where we've gotten to. But I also know we have a ways to go, and um, we're working towards that day. So, yes, we would love to see that. <laughs> On that. One, one question I have for about the animal shelter. Um, 
of the funding that goes out of Hart County to Franklin County, how much of that comes back into the Hart County vets? When, when the animal is adopted, it is the, the adopter's choice on which vet they use. We have um, both vets in Livonia, both vets in Hartwell, and Royston Animal Hospital, and they get to pick. Because, you know, some people have another animal and they already have an established vet. We so get, they get to choose. That question comes up frequently. Um, yeah, the vets are doing it at a discount. I understand that. I understand. They're losing I understand. money by accepting those certificates. I understand. But people ask where their money's going, and that's why I'm asking that question. So. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. I mean, we. I mean, I'd have to pull a number. I can't tell you exactly how many because, like I said, it's everyone's option. But I mean, okay. a lot of people use both vets in Hartwell <coughs> and have for a while. So, do do y'all even keep a record of that, or? That we keep a record when it comes back to us. When it's adopted, then they get to call and pick and everything like that. But then when the certificate comes back to us, then we know which vet use, which vet they use. And I think part of that maybe is encouraging people from our community to adopt from the Northeast Georgia Animal Shelter. And because we don't have a big facility, um, we you know, have Dr. Malden's place, which we are grateful for. Um, we do try to encourage people to go to the shelter, which is open five days a week. You can walk through and see a whole lot of animals. I'll tell you what another big problem is, in my opinion, is the shelter is small and they, there's not a vet on staff. Um, you go over the, the line to South Carolina and you got a great big shelter pauses there with a veterinarian on staff and they have regular specials on low adoption fees so people from our community are going over there and adopting and then if it doesn't work out you adopt on impulse if it doesn't work out the shelter doesn't want to take them at pause doesn't want to take them back so if you live in Hart and Franklin County you think well oh, my shelter will take them back so we're trying to say no we're not taking them back Okay. Back to mm. <laughs> Anything else before we wrap this up and no. move on? We we'll appreciate the update. Appreciate what y'all do. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, moving on to uh, the next item on the agenda. Reports by constitutional officers and department heads. Mr. Gordon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do have some matters that will be covered later in the agenda, but as you know, I rarely take this time for a personal comment, but I, I want to tonight. We've had a remarkable amount of rain. My wife got me a <laughs> rain gauge, or you know, a really cool one for Christmas, and I, we measured six inches in January and another five in February, and that's more than I've ever seen in a long time. And that has caused uh, considerable damage to our roads and just in general to the county. And I just want to take a personal minute and thank Terrell Partain. Terrell, as you know, has a background in emergency management, and I've just never seen anybody that's quite as adept as he is in jumping right in and making sure that things are done as they need to be done. And singling him out, I also want to say that you've really got a set of dedicated employees, both in the road department and in all the departments, but is certainly in law enforcement as well. And each of you also have taken a role in that. I don't, I don't know if I've seen any of you out there actually filling in the hole, but I know that you have uh, been monitoring the situation. But I did want to just take this moment and express my deep thanks to Terrell and all of the people in the county who weathered this storm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. County Administrator's Report. Uh, a couple of things. Again, uh, I appreciate Walter's kind words, but I, I work the phones and in, in, in paperwork and get around and take a few pictures. The guys on the outside do all the work. Uh, we did, we had, if I counted right, nine pipes blown out. Uh, a couple, one subdivision cut completely off uh, with 11 or 12 houses in it and, and a couple of fairly major roads cut, just still cut. Uh, these crews worked all that day through all that pouring rain. 
and got people access in and out of their houses where if we need to get in and get them. Uh, and, and they won't do all the work. It's not me. I appreciate Walter's kind words. But it, it's the guys, and it's the road department, the, the, the sheriff's department, them guys out there in the wet just like everybody else is. But they've done an extraordinarily good job. They worked through till Friday afternoon, uh, and we got access to everybody. I mean, everybody could get in and out, and that was our goal. And then uh, we'll start picking up the pieces and going forward from here. But I, I certainly appreciate everything they've done. Uh, and I appreciate y'all for the cooperation and help I get. Uh, I'm not never questioned. I say I need something that's done, and, and I certainly appreciate that. Uh, the other thing is that we talked a while back about meeting with uh, the Department of Transportation, uh, and, and I think y'all got a copy of the, uh, the uh, letter today. Uh, there's a planned meeting on the 26th uh, at the uh, Carnival office, and at uh, our particular time is at uh, 1030 to 12. Uh, it'd be us, Madison, Everett County, uh, those three counties will meet with them. The other counties will meet with them at 8 that morning. Uh, but I certainly hope that any of y'all can come and can be there. Uh, this is a meeting with the new, uh, I don't like the way it's listed here, it's acting direct uh, district engineer. I was hoping it's going to be the permanent one. We've had several of them in the last year. Uh -huh. But, but at least he has made contact with us and is talking to us. So uh, I, I certainly hope y'all can join us there at that meeting. Like I say, it's uh, the 26th at 10.30 to 12. That's I, all I have. would like to see us request uh, an additional time. The reason I say that, we've got projects where we had uh, Sue Ann Decker come out. We all went out and rode. There's still some things out there. Uh, I think an hour and a half for three counties and the municipalities is not enough time. I agree. I think this is their, their they have two of these SIP meetings a year. Mm -hmm. This is taking the place of that. Now, I've also talked to the I'll district thing offline about our particular stuff mm -hmm. that we still haven't got that particular date set up. You can come here. We've got uh, the, the issue with the drive with the, at the, at the fire department straightened out. We've got mm -hmm. that taken care of. And a couple of other things we've already handled. Uh, but again, like you say, our other projects and stuff, we want to sit down one-on-one -on -one at some point with them and talk about that. I'd like to see us ask that Sue Ann be there so we can at least get an update on some of these other projects or stay over, whatever. <coughs> Who's that? Sue Ann Decker, our district engineer. She is not there. Anymore. She's the one. She's going to be there for this meeting, though. Is she? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know Sue Ann was going to be there. But I know, I know she's not in that role anymore. <coughs> she's going to be there. Okay. That's all I have. And I know Bowersville's got some things they want to talk to them about as well. Okay, well, they certainly should be welcome to come. Yeah, they got, they got to me. Okay, uh, anything else? That's all I have. Um, I, too, want to echo, and I know everybody on the board feels the same way about these folks at the road department that gets out when these situations happen all hours of the night and day and uh, their time away from their families as well as all our emergency services. But I want to mention again this meeting Park County has a code red um, alert system that's done through 911. If you don't have it, it is a good tool to have. It will notify you of weather emergencies. We used it uh, a couple weeks ago when we had the, the active shooter uh, sending out messages so people know what's going on. So if you don't have it, I strongly encourage you to get it. Um, you can get text messages to your phone. It's on our website. If anybody needs any help, getting it if you not need help downloading it and getting it all we got to do is come down here we'll help get it set up but it is a very good tool uh, to help you prepare for emergencies and you're notified in advance uh, so you want to follow yeah, let me that. interject one thing if you go we've started a, a Facebook well, we've had a Facebook page but I've got somebody now that can keep it updated uh, if you'll go to this heart County emergency services on Facebook uh, they're updating it continuously. Same with the roads. We was we was displaying lists of the roads that was closed and overflown the whole time, and it's updated continuously while something's going on. So it's there. Use it. And the code red, you can now sign up with a text message. So those instructions are on our Facebook page and our website. You know, if you don't have to go on the internet no more, you can do it by your phone, just texting. So um, please use it. We're paying for it. We need to get as much good out of it as we can. Thank you. Um, I wanted to also uh, send condolences out to uh, Franklin Springs Police Chief John Thomas and his family. He passed away yesterday. Uh, Mr. Thomas worked for Hart County for quite a few years as a sheriff's deputy. Uh, so I wanted to 
uh, send those condolences out. Uh, we'll get into the financial report. We don't, don't not going to be able to display it. We usually show it up, but uh, I, I apologize for that. I, I've changed computers <coughs> this week. And everything I've got, don't have a sitting right on something. So anyway, for the month of January, <coughs> we, uh, we have a dashboard and we have our data points color-coded red, yellow, and green. Green meaning meeting the goal, yellow meaning it's within 3% variance of the target, and then red meaning it's greater than 3%. Um, our actual revenues uh, for each month, uh, we need $1,022,170 for general fund revenues uh, for each month, and our expenditures are $1,022,170. Our actual revenue for the month of January was $2,778,212, uh, significantly over the goal. The main reason is uh, property taxes were due and uh, they're still coming in. So you're going to see that revenue stream uh, start to drop as we go forward into our fiscal year. Uh, actual expenses were red. They came in at $1,111,370. And that's timing of things. Uh, but Year to date for our fiscal year, uh, we're five. We got a five percent gap on expenses, and we're ninety-seven percent over on revenues. But that's a little misleading. Um, looking at our other revenue drivers, our LOST, which is a <coughs> one percent sales tax, is used one hundred percent to roll back your millage rate. Uh, came in at two hundred forty-one thousand six hundred eighty-five dollars uh, in the month of January. Another very strong month. Uh, EMS fees came in at $110,319 versus a target of $95,800. And as I say every month, people are buying cars. Uh, vehicle title fees, the uh, budgeted revenue amount was $62,000, and it's coming in at $109,661 for the month of uh, January. So uh, right now we've got a, a very good picture going forward. Uh, we do have some. Uh, uh, unexpected expenses that we're going to talk a little bit more about here uh, a little bit later on tonight. That uh, not anything major, major, but uh, something to be prepared on. Uh, anybody have any questions on the financial report? If not, uh, I'll move into commissioner's report, District Two. Uh, I want to echo what um, Walter said and um, Terrell said about our uh, about our snow and rain that we had. Uh, appreciate the job that law enforcement did. Uh, Post 52, um, our first responders, EMS, and all of our county employees appreciate the job that they did about trying to help us get the county back up and going. And uh, I know we still had a lot of several roads that were out, but I appreciate the job y'all did. Appreciate it. That's all. Yeah. Uh, District three. Yeah, I'd just like to echo the same uh, comments of our road department and the type of community that we live in. Uh, there were some roads in Hart County that emergency services could not be provided because of the roads. And we've got guys like Terrell that's monitoring these situations and they're looking out for you. And if you're in one of those situations, we're going to do our best to take care of it so you can have emergency access. Uh, so I just appreciate living in a community that has these kind of services that uh, look after each one of us. And uh, I, like, again, road department, like I said, the EMS and emergency services they go out and locate these problems and the road department is, does their best to uh, um, recover these situations. So I just, again, like to say I appreciate those. Okay. District 4. I'm going to repeat the same thing all the rest of them said. We've got a good group of guys out here that works hard, takes care of y'all, <clears throat> takes care of us sometimes. So. But they do a good job. And <clears throat> it's a pretty tough job when it comes to storm and stuff like that. It's not an easy task. So I want to echo that. And uh, also I want to mention that uh, we, we, uh, I read the other day and I talked to one of the judges. They have come up with an idea. I guess it's not an old idea, a, a new idea. It's an old idea, but they're looking at video conferencing, which would uh, save us a lot of transportation costs at the uh, hauling people from different jails and all. They can do it all right there from video. And that could save, uh, have the potential of saving us thousands of dollars a year. So I want to give them a hand up because I appreciate that. And uh, I told the judge the other night I appreciate that. 
And I'm going to say the same thing Walt did. We had a pretty major rain event. I've seen things in my backyard that I didn't have. I didn't know I had a pond, but I woke up that day and had one. <laughs> it didn't stay a long time, but I had one. <clears throat> and I think a lot of other people did, too. Uh, we had a, a road culvert washed out. And have you ever found a culvert? No. I don't have a clue where that thing went. Has any of them been found? Some yeah. of them still are. Some, some of them are. <laughs> And the reason I say that is I think that, you know, when we start putting these things back, we need to start looking at maybe using something a little bit different than a metal pipe, uh, especially on these big creek crossings. that got that much <coughs> might prevent us from having this happen again. Uh, the one that I've seen was that's the only way people had in and out, even though we had a neighbor in the neighborhood that actually let some of them go across their property. Uh, to where they could get in and out there for just a little while, but uh, and I, I'd like to, you know, appreciate her. That was pretty nice. A lot of people wouldn't allow you to do that, but it got done for a few people, and that's all I got to say, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay. All right, we'll move into old business item 12, A, voter registration budget amendment for new voting machine basically, equipment and supplies. Basically, what this is, last year when we done the budget, we took a shot in the dark at how much it was going to take. We budgeted ten thousand dollars for the extras it's going to take for the new voting system. We know for a fact it's going to run over that. Uh, we got a grant. Uh, the state put out a grant to help pay for part of it, so we don't know the exact number that we'll end up, we'll end up spending, and we'll need to adjust the budget by. What this is for is for my everybody has permission to use contingency funds to cover anything over that $10,000 until we get to the point we know the exact dollar, and I'll come back and we'll make the final budget amendment to their budget per se. Um, but uh, I can't spend any more than we got budgeted, and we're going to go over that 10000 We feel fairly comfortable. Couple will. I make a motion we use contingency dollars to cover any overages for make until we make the final budget and approve that. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Sayer and a second by Commissioner Carter. We authorize the county administrator to use a contingency fund to cover expenses uh, associated with the new voting machines and equipment and supplies. Any more discussion? Yeah, I got something I'd like to say. I had I want to turn some paperwork in at the electric office the other day, <clears throat> and I I got to try one of the new machines that, and I done pretty good. Can you see it? Yeah, I see. The it. green, it's bright. <laughs> <laughs> but it, uh, and I also want to mention I don't know the exact time, but I, uh, uh, Margaret back here in the back can tell you the exact time. They're gonna have one set up Saturday sometime. 11. What time? Ten to eleven. Ten to eleven at the literacy center. This Saturday, okay, and they're going to have one at, uh, on Thursday evening at 5.30. I don't know how long they're going to stay there <coughs> at the Literacy Center also. So I, I will tell people to get out and check them out. It's a little different, and, uh, but it's it's not that hard difficult, but it's a little bit diff different. That's all i got. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Sayer and a second by Commissioner Carter. Any more discussion? Public comment on this issue? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, next item on the agenda is item 12B, amendment to the Corps of Engineer Parts contract. Yeah. Basically what this is, we had two contracts for the Corps of Engineers, one for uh, Long Point and the Mega Ramp and Milltown, and then another for all the smaller ramps we got. Uh, they called last week and we don't know if we could put these together. And me and one contract put one contract with it, and they came in, they came due at different times, the two contracts did. So the Corps wanted to combine them into one contract for all of them, where well, they'll all come due at one time, and it's just a matter of making that, give me authorization to sign that contract to make that happen. There's no, no funds involved in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I make a motion and we'll approve this request. Uh, I'll second it. I have a motion by Commissioner Teas and a second by Commissioner Carter that we approve the request to combine the contracts. This don't mention over 29. No, the, the, the contract three. itself does. Uh, okay. that, that was our discussion. That was to take the small ones and put them in with the old 29 contract. Right here. Okay, I got you. These ones are still now. Any more discussion? Public I, comment? I, I got one more thing I want to say. I, I, I mentioned this to Terrell a good while back, but during some of this storm, I, I went out and, and, and got called to come out and talk to some people, and I, and I went down to the Rocky Ford ramp, and you know, I told you a while back. I got a light out there, got a pole, the wire runs underground, runs up the road a little ways, and it's got a pole right there, and the wire just stuck out and nobody's ever hooked to it. I don't know who put the wires up, who put the lights oh, up. Maybe I do. 
Uh, but I've got to have them all the parts checked by electrician in the next week or two to cert do the certification for this contract. So I'll get them located when they go that up that way. We've never sent them up there because I didn't know there was any power up there at all. Yeah, well, look, I mean, it's got a pole up, and it looked like it's been there a long time. I, I don't remember it being there. It's yeah, every, every year I have to have a electri certified electrician go around the, the ramps. We got power in, they have to certify it's all to code. Uh, well, but I'll get them run up there and check that one too. Yeah. Well, I yeah. appreciate that. Thank you. All right, I have a motion by Commissioner Tees and a second by Commissioner Carter to approve the combination of these contracts for the county administrator's request. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is new business. Item 13A, beer and wine license, class B application for Destiny Corporation of South Carolina, DBA Reed Creek General Store, Store 231 Reed Creek School Road, Hartwell, Georgia. Uh, basically on this one, uh, the distance, uh, required distance of the ordinances, it can't be met. Uh, that distance per ordinance is 350 yards, which is 1,050 foot. The measured uh, distance by Randall with a, with a rolling wheel on this one was 138 foot 6 inches, I believe. Where did it measure from? Measured from the front door of the store to the property line of the cemetery. It was measured from the front door of the store? Yes, sir. As best we could tell, the part, it, we were within a foot of what that line is. I mean, there no, wasn't a stop there, but we went off to the right away of the road, measuring the center of the, the road. Okay. That is a, uh, a specific requirement as part of our ordinance. And that being said, and not meeting it, can I get a motion that we deny this license request? I'll make a motion we deny the request. I have a motion by Commissioner Sayer that we deny the request as a result of the distance requirement not being met as per ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? Yeah, I got a few things to say about it. I, and I'm not arguing pro or con for this thing because I, I don't really like the idea of changing something. But this ordinance will be 35 years old in May of this year. And we have talked about this ordinance many, many, many times. It's got a lot of unclear things in it, a lot of things that need to be addressed and it needs to be upgraded. We don't need to be operating off of 35 year old orders. It's, it's getting harder and harder for me to justify in my mind to vote on something that's 35 years old. You know, I was a young man when this thing was wrote. All of us. <laughs> I was still old. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I'm serious, and I know y'all, surely to God, y'all agree with me, but we don't need to be operating on 35 years. And we're at y'all's discretion. Y'all tell me what you want to do, and I'll be happy to get We've you together. We've talked about it and talked about it. We've never, never done it. And, and I've actually critiqued that ordinance, and i got the paperwork to pull out them, and I'll be glad to share it with you. But sometime very soon, we need to address this situation. You know, this, this location was for sale for quite some time. We had many people inquire um, about this. I had numerous phone calls personally. Um, if I were to buy this, could would the county change the distance requirement? And uh, uh, you know we can't change it for one. Uh, the ordinance is very clear. It says it shall meet that distance requirement. Um, being on the board for 20 years, we made Max Saver amend and modify their building to meet the distance requirement, so they could get it predecessors as far as previous owners um, I don't know that anybody ever applied but I know there were some it, inquiries it, there was an earlier owner yeah. to apply. okay and they were also denied obviously um, but I mean it is what it is and uh, you know I don't think it's right to, to change it for one um, I'm just going speaking about that based off of what Commissioner Carter said um, others who've inquired were told no, and and I, yeah, I think we got to stick to that distance requirement, even if we do make change changes. But that's just my thoughts and, and, and my opinion. If anybody else has got anything, well, that store was built by Ed Lane, wasn't it? Um, Ellen right. Ed Lane, and I I know uh, whenever Ed owned it, he tried to get uh, alcohol and wine up there too at one time. And there was. That's been, that's been a long time ago. I, you know, I don't like you said. I didn't know exactly when the ordinance was written, but uh, 
the commissioner from that area also um, engaged in a fairly lengthy review of that ordinance and took public comments. There were public meetings. Um, the ordinance was tweaked a little bit, but substantively it remained the same. If you really read this thing and read it with the intent of critiquing it, there's a lot of stuff and that don't make no sense whatsoever. And I know that y'all might disagree with me, but it's just me, it just don't make any sense. And I'm not saying, you know, we need to change the distance. That's not what I'm arguing about. I'm just arguing about, and I know y'all heard this before, and you probably won't hear it again. <laughs> but uh, it needs update. Well, these this, distances are considerably greater than what the state law requires as minimum distance. Yeah, well, yeah. Considerably greater than uh, the city of Harlem. Yeah, we're looking at a fifth of a mile. You get a thousand fifty feet. You right there on within a few feet of me on a fifth of one mile. And that, you know, I, you know, like I say, I'm, I, I don't hardly ever drink anything at all. But I don't, somebody else won't drink that that business. I don't, I don't care about that. But but it's just to me, I think we 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 are continuously shooting ourselves in the foot by not looking at this thing. And I, I've been hammering that issue, and I'm going to keep hammering it, I reckon. Maybe one day we'll bite the bullet and do it. I just want to uh, <clears throat> respond to one thing as, as far, far as a letter that we received. Uh, it notes that I have competitors on the same highway as my store, Highway 51, that sells beer, and one of them is closer to a church than mine. The church that's being mentioned here is actually in the county, in the Sunoco gas station at 1475 Reed Creek Highway is in the city. So because that station is in the city, that would be under the city's jurisdiction, which is a totally different ordinance. So I just wanted to make that point of clarification. I did also confirm that with the tax assessor's office today that those locations were the store was in the city and the church was in the county, just, just as a point of clarification. I want to ask a question. This Walter, you might have to uh, answer this one, but in our ordinance, it's allow, it allows evidence in opposition to right. anybody having a beer and wine license. That's right. But it don't allow evidence in support of it. It implicitly does. Um, there, when there have been circumstances like this that, um, that need further discussion, uh, my recollection is there's been plenty, uh, typically, uh, for and against and you know as the chair pointed out this particular one has um, this has been an issue before and uh, the board has looked at it at some length I don't suggest that it shouldn't be done again I think it's always good to look at your ordinances and update them if needed this particular ordinance was actually constructed by Judge Wilbur Owens of the United States District Court back in the mid to late 80s. 85. Okay. Uh, I was not the county attorney at the time, <laughs> fortunately, but uh, this one came up uh, as a result of a federal court action and um, that's one of the reasons I think that's, I've always believed that's one of the reasons why there are uh, some things that are a little difficult to understand or that certainly aren't uh, models of clarity. So. I was 27 years old when that order was written. Um, I have a motion and a second to deny. Do uh, you want to address the board? Just a second, you'll get your chance. Do you want to address the board? Come on. Put the cop down. Now you can smack him. Yeah, I'm Arthur Gast, uh, the owner of the Reed Creek General Store. Own the store and the and the property. And, um, Chairman Dorsey and other commissioners, thank you so much for this opportunity to be able to speak. Mr. Pertain, thank you so much also. Um, I would like, as Commissioner Carter had pointed out, I'd like to speak a little bit about the ordinance. And I know that today may not be that day, but at least lay some kind of foundation 
of maybe some thought process to go into of a change someday down, down the road. And uh, maybe that change will be today, I'm not sure. But the reason why I applied is to really get a level playing field for competition. Um, I don't really know, maybe there's one out there, I don't really know any other convenience store out there uh, that cannot sell beer and wine um, because of their proximity of a church or a school, whatever. Maybe I, may I just feel like I'm the only one. But it's very difficult, as you know, some of you gentlemen, I'm sure, are businessmen. Uh, very difficult. If it's not a level playing field, it can be hard on your on your business. Uh, if you're a restaurant business and you need to you need to offer a full menu and you've got one arm tied behind your back for whatever reason, you cannot serve hamburger or steak or whatever. It's it just I mean it's just that it's just that difficult. So I understand that um, tonight you know the reason that I am um, that I'm not permitted to sell beer and wine at this location is because uh, I am a little bit too close to, to a church, as Commissioner Carter pointed out, and quite really quite understand the logic of that, of that ordinance. Um, but I would like to make a couple arguments um, for that. One is that you know, I am a Christian also. I really uh, respect the church. I'm, I thank God that um, the Reed Creek Baptist Church is right next to us. We have a really good relationship with them. Um, the pastor before, pa Pastor Eric, uh, was there when I opened up the store. I invited him to come into the store to dedicate the store before we open. Uh, each um, uh, winter or during Christmas, we have a Christmas event. Uh, at the end of that Christmas event, uh, two years ago, I, I did this uh, function. I, we actually close, you know, with a, with a prayer for the Lord to bless you know, Reed Creek, the Reed Creek community, the families of Reed Creek. Uh, this past Christmas, I was unable to make that uh, event, so I asked Pastor Eric to, to do that blessing prayer. So our, our relationship, you know, with the church is very good. We appreciate them. They're great customers. Um, but unfortunately, it's, you know, because I am you know, too close to that, to that building there that we're not able to have... Um, uh, the, the privilege of selling beer and wine. If the first argument would be, if there is a some kind of negative connotation in, in beer and wine that, is, that affects the church or whatever, then why why is it just 350 yards? If the church needs to be protected against beer and wine, if it's bad or if it's evil for some reason, uh, why not make that um, ordinance? You know, three miles from any, from any church. A convenience store or a grocery store cannot sell beer. Why not 10 miles? If it's, um, keep on going down that logic, if it's really that bad of a, of a negative connotation, then uh, why not let's make the county dry? Uh, that way we do have a level playing field. I'd be, I'd be okay with that. I just don't like being the only one that cannot participate on a level playing field as, every, as everybody else. Let me, um, so that's my first argument. If it's, if the church, you know, in general, and I, I'm not just talking about, you know, the church that's next to us, but the church, any church in Hart County, if they need, you know, this kind of a protection, uh, let's make it more than 350 yards. Um, let's make it, let's make it fair. But my, um, my next argument, I'd like to go ahead and make a, a biblical argument. Because uh, you might hear that in opposition tonight, you know, some biblical arguments. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a pastor's son. Uh, my father is also a, a Christian educator. And so I'm very, very well familiar, you know, with um, what goes on in churches and stuff like that. Um, but all through the Bible, there is a lot of references to wine. And I, I consider beer to be in the same category as wine. Um, wine is, you know, fermentation of fruit. And uh, to make wine, beer is a fermentation of grains, you know, to make, to make beer. So when I make reference to wine, I'm talking about beer also. But the Bible makes a lot of references about wine. In the Old, in the Old Testament, um, you know, God commanded, you know, uh, uh, you know, the children of Israel for once a year to bring all of their increase for that year and to, to make a tithe. And uh, that tithe was on cattle, it was on goats, it was on sheep, it was on corn, and the scriptures mentioned to tithe on the wine also. Um, 
so they did pay, you know, in, in, in scriptures, they, they paid uh, tithe on wine. Noah, um, <coughs> after God destro destroyed the earth because of its wickedness, um, Noah was the only one that survived because Noah believed God and trusted God. Uh, Noah, first thing he did after the great flood was he built, he made a vineyard. He planted a vineyard and he made wine. And that was, in my opinion, that would be the time for God to say, hey, Noah, I just destroyed the world, you know, don't make wine, you know. Um, but, you know, the Lord did not forbid Noah to continue to make, to make wine. But that was a good time for, for him to do so. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say, does it forbid to not drink wine. And again, I'm referring to wine, I'm referring to beer also here. There's not, among the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not drink wine. You will not find it. There will be plenty of other um, commandments not to do things which are uh, very, um, which are very right. Uh, thou shalt not steal. I mean, I, we can all understand that. But it uh, does not mention thou shalt not drink wine, thou shalt not drink beer. But the Bible does say a lot about and does make reference to drunkenness. And um, here, you know, the Apostle Paul, you know, did command the church and commanded us to not drink in excess. And looking at this ordinance, I think that this is probably a key to this whole issue. It probably is moderation. Um, is beer and wine an evil unto itself? I don't think so. Um, should it be used in moderation? Absolutely. Uh, should be, um, um, you know, should someone have a lifestyle of drunkenness? Absolutely <clears throat> not. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the beer and wine itself, I don't think, I don't think the Lord pro prohibits it. And somewhere in that ordinance, I think there's some kind of protection or reference that if you have too close to selling beer and wine too close to a church, that bad things are going to happen. Well, I think that, sh that argument can be made to, you know, based on the community, based on where it's set at. Uh, here at Reed Creek, um, you know, we have, you know, wonderful um, citizens there, I have wonderful customers. Uh, they are um, upright, they are responsible, they work hard, they go to work, they pay their taxes. Um, I don't think there's um, uh, a problem in that area where if Reed Creek General Store was permitted to sell beer and wine that the whole community is going to go down the drain. I don't, uh, they're buying it from my competitors, because it's not a level playing field, they're buying it somewhere else. Having said these two arguments, let me just interject um, a little bit about myself and what I do stand for. Because, you know, I'm, I'm advocating, you know, to be able to sell beer and wine in my store. But just so that you know that you know, I'm not, you know, maybe just void of, of morals or anything, let me, let me tell you what I'm, I feel strongly about and strongly against. Pornography is one of them. Uh, pornography, I believe that, you know, it entered this country probably in the 1960s when I was very little. And um, I've been around a little bit, seen a lot of it. But I think you can probably tie pornography to um, sexual promiscuity, to, to the, ri the high rate of adultery, and probably the high rate of divorce. Back in the 40s and 50s, the divorce rate was very, very low in this country. Now it's 50, 60 percent. Even among the church, it's 50, 60 percent divorce rate. So, you know, pornography, I'm just, I'm against. Also, um, illegal drug paraphernalia, same thing. I think illegal drugs is a scourge on this country, scourge on any community. I'm against, I'm against that. The reason I mention these two things, you will not find in Reed Creek General Store, you will not find for sale any pornography, and you will not find any drug paraphernalia for sale at a Reed Creek General Store. You mentioned a petition. Um, I'd like to go ahead at this time, just here's, here's the original. I'd like to give it to Commissioner Teasley if it'd be okay. I think that's your district right there. It is. Uh, those are the original signatures, about 760, who are for 
uh, Ray Creek General Store selling beer and wine. Um, I know that, um, uh, you know, our customers want it, desire it. I know they're buying it from somewhere else at this point. Um, and I'd just like to, you know, to conclude, just to relook, as Commissioner Carter says, relook at this, at this ordinance. I know it's in your ability and your power to make exceptions, to make waivers, and um, it looks like I might have to wait for another day. I hopefully, hopefully that is not the case. I believe that you can make exceptions. Um, but I believe the citizens on Reed Creek are on the right side of this issue. And I just, whatever's in your power, I really just hope that you, can, you would consider that. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you for letting me speak. I appreciate well, that. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else <clears throat> public comment on this issue? Whichever, come on. Yes. Um, I've read the brief statement. I just want to let you know who I am. My name is Alan Brown. Thank you, uh, the board and Commissioner uh, Chairman Dorsey, for letting me speak tonight. I have no connection to Reed Creek General Store. I'm a private citizen, one of the 700 or so that has signed the petition. And I just wanted to speak in favor of a variance. Again, if not tonight, I think uh, to, to your comments, Commissioner Corey, we should really look at this. Uh, my wife and I have owned a house here since 2001. We live just off of Hidden Point Road, which is about four miles from Reed Creek General Store. Uh, my mother-in-law lives two coves over. She bought her house in 1998 and built another house. And her son, my brother-in-law, now lives in that house. So my Brother-in-law and sister-in-law live within two coves. We're all within two miles of each other, and it's a great neighborhood. Uh, we moved here from Louisville, Kentucky, from Decatur, from Alpharetta, from Dunwoody, and all of us as, as adults have agreed that we're going to spend the rest of our lives here, where we live today. We love Hartwell and we love Hart County. We were regular customers at the LNJ before it closed, and we're now loyal customers at Reed Creek General Store. And in my opinion, just my opinion, since the closing of l and and perhaps before that, the stores at this particular corner have always been challenged to draw enough customers and revenue. It's a small corner. Stores have come and gone. Um, but since Reed Creek has opened, I've come to consider, especially Jason and Tanya, but the rest of their staff as friends. And just I want to talk a little bit about that store and why I think it's worth consideration. They've conceived, created, and hosted multiple community events. Their gas prices are competitive with any store that's in the town of Hartwell. Their grocery selection is sufficient to stock any kitchen. They sell fresh meat and produce, which is unique for a store in that location, hand-scooped ice cream. And I know for a fact that their fresh-cooked pizzas and chicken are among the best that I've ever tasted in Hart County. Um, I consider Jason and Tanya in particular not only as friends, but I consider them to be ambassadors for our community at large, and Commissioner Teasley, in, in your your district. This, re this request for variance is not only about the, the sale of beer and wine, but it's about increasing the likelihood of that corner being economically viable and allowing the staff at Reed Creek to be able to maintain and grow their business to protect their livelihoods and continue to have the positive impact that they've had on the neighborhood at large since they opened. So I would be in support of either today or some future consideration of a variance or a change in the ordinance. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, sir. Jay. My name is Jerry Hannigan. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Um, I live in the Reed Creek area, as well as uh, several of my neighbors that are here. And if you acknowledge, and this gentleman stole my thunder. Uh, we, are in, we are in support of, uh, of their application. Uh, I think an ordinance that's 35 years old, you know, warrants a, a second look. Uh, I can tell you when L&J closed over five years ago, uh, it, was, it, made, it created an inconvenience for us. And when it reopened, uh, these folks have done a great job of providing much more than L&J ever provided before. And, uh, and this one was right. They have a very friendly staff, uh, seem to be very competent. And we would like for them to stay in business. I don't know that I necessarily care whether or not I need, I can, I have the ability to go there and buy beer and wine, but I want them to stay in business. 
And they're one of the few places in the county that sells non-ethanol gas. And that's really important to me, and I think it is to some of my, my fellow neighbors. So we respectfully would request that you take a look at that ordinance again and give, it, uh, give this gentleman a, a level playing field. I think that's the American way. That, that's how capitalism is all about. Any of my neighbors want to add to something that I've said? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have a uh, motion by Commissioner Sayer and a second by Commissioner Teasley to uh, deny based on the distance requirement. Um, you know, when you look at the, uh, we're not, we're denying the application specifically on the distance issue. Um, because that's what doesn't meet the requirements. Um, all the other stuff, when you look at buying property or whatever, there's a due diligence period and a responsibility on the owner's part. You know, in my opinion, that's something that should have been looked at at the time because this is where the business model was going to take it. But that's just my opinion. I'm not throwing that out there as an attack or anything. But um, again, keep in mind, this board, uh, some members of this board, because of previous decisions that have been made, we have set a precedent in requiring everybody to make this distance requirement. If you go out on 29 North at Max Saver, the reason that store is designed the way it is is because they added about 30 feet. Was it not, Walter? Wasn't that right? That's right. They was uh, 14 foot short. But they had to, because of the, the geometry, they had to add to it to, <coughs> to make it. And I struggle with changing this with the many people who have asked in the past about changing this for one person. Uh, when you look at making changes, you get into special interest and, and it should be fair for everybody. And I, I know what the uh, owners of uh, Max Saver spent, it was close to $30,000 in their renovations to meet that requirement. And I think that precedent has been set, but uh, that's just my opinion. I'm one of the, one of the member of the board. I'm just going to share that. Uh, does anybody else have anything for discussion? Yeah, I got, I got. Everything. Wrap this one up. guy stood up back there and was talking about the food. They got some good tater boots up there too, buddy. I like them, <laughs> but I can't eat them no more because my diabetes is flaring up. <clears throat> Our ordinance at the beginning of the ordinance, a lot of ordinances has a purpose and intent of what it's the criteria set for. What is this ordinance for? This one does not have that. <clears throat> And that's why, you know, I struggle some with it. And, and I won't say this, and I'll pretty much be done. As a board of commissioners, we have the responsibility of regulating some types of business, but some others we do not regulate. I feel that as a governing body, we are di directly responsible sometimes for local businesses we regulate to be successful or unsuccessful. And our ordinances and regulations should be fair, consistent, and clearly defined as to their purpose, intent, for any of them, not just this one, but all of them. And to me, this one does not meet that criteria. And I'm not sitting here arguing for anybody's ability to sell beer or against anybody's ability to sell beer. I'm just making points of why I feel about the one. In my opinion, we don't need that. And, and it, like I said earlier, it needs to be addressed. And it's, it's getting hard for me to continue voting for an ordinance that's 35 years old that I, I just somewhat don't believe in anymore. That's all I got to say, and I okay. appreciate it. All right, I have a motion, a second. One more time. We got something. Quick, come on. <clears throat> Thank you again. Um, I'd just like to make some clarification or help me to understand. Uh, there's a convenience store in the county, airline convenience store, um, uh, less than 100 yards away from the school property, and I understand the school. It still is, is not functioning, but um, the school system, the school board still owns that property. Yet um, you, you did grant them a, a beer and wine application. Can you shed some light on that, what the difference is? Uh, if, if the church was closed, would I be able to get that? Uh, well, the definition of a or? school building by the state is a building where school activities, learning is going on. So that's not happening there anymore. Uh, yes, sir. That's the state, but yours is the county ordinance. It's still <coughs> 350 yards. Yeah. Right. Is My ordinance county. does not address that. It does not stay active school. It just says school right. It says school yeah. property. Yeah. That's correct. And that's in my critique that I, I've done. What was the logic in granting that application? Because the school was not 
functioning? Is that what? That's correct. Okay. All right. Thank you. And there's been other situations in the county where stores were there first and churches were built. You can go out to 29 South and you'll find that uh, there's a store there that sells beer and wine. It's a uh, similar situation. The church was built after the store. So the store was there first. So, okay, I have a motion and a second that we deny uh, based on distance. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Um, there is an opportunity if you want to appeal that you can go through. It's, it's covered in here, uh, just so you're aware of what the options are. Um, uh, moving on to 13B, pay scale adjustment for the clerk of court's office. Uh, uh, Mr. Gray had uh, asked that we take a look at this. He requested that uh, one of his employees be moved to, um, you want to take it? Pay, pay grade seven, move to a pay grade 13. Okay. I make a motion we approve. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Sayer, a second by Commissioner Teasley to approve. Any more discussion? Public comment? Are we going up two pay grades? That's normally what no. we always do. No, that's not his request. You need to read his request. Okay. So I have a motion and a second that we grant the request of the clerk of court. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is uh, just for discussion. Uh, there's been some talk uh, in neighboring counties, and we've had some discussion um, I have with our state representative about the possibility of increasing the current homestead exemption for those 65 and older. Right now it's a, a $10,000 plus the $2,000 that everybody gets. Um, if we're going to take any action on this, I think we should. Um, I've talked to the school superintendent as well, um, and our, our thought process was this should be phased in over a two-year period and go 5% the first year, 10% the second year. Uh, this would have to go before the voters in November, uh, so I just wanted to throw that out there and see if there's enough support to look at doing this, and if there is, we can discuss it offline, put it on the agenda at a later meeting. Uh, but we do need to get this done in February so it can get through the agenda. I mean through the legislature and get on the ballot. Anybody have any questions or anything on that one? This would help senior citizens. Yeah, I'd like to know how much money we're talking about. About a hundred thousand dollars for the Board of Commissioners. It would take a hundred thousand dollars away from us. It's about four hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars total for impact on the county. A hundred thousand per five thousand? Per year, or that was a ten percent. No, that was a ten percent total. But you're going, going, you're going from two thousand to ten thousand. Going from no, you right now you have a ten thousand dollar one out there plus the two thousand. Every homeowner is eligible for the two thousand, yeah. but those sixty-five and older are eligible for an incremental ten thousand. So you could, this is an opportunity to increase that, and it doesn't have to be the five thousand and ten thousand. <coughs> it could be whatever we decided. But uh, I think, I can't remember the numbers, like 2,200 and 2,200 homesteaded properties um, plus um, some change. But when you look at the impact, it's going to be somewhere around $400,000 or give or take a little bit, depending on what, it's going to depend on what percent you go with. But we can get, Terrell can confirm those numbers and bring it back and we can yeah, talk about it next yeah, week. Let me, let me do a check and I'll get down to the side. We'll get, that, that's all going to fluctuate just a little bit. we get the ballpark. But this is something I think that would help out some of our senior citizens. Um, Which we all going to be one day. That's right. Yeah. Some closer than others. So we won't vote on anything tonight, but this is kind of get the ball rolling. Um, uh, I know Alan Powell, our representative, would like to see all of his all of his counties that he represents do the same thing. <coughs> but uh, this will have to be done. Like I said, we need to get this done in a second meeting if we're going to do it. Any more discussion or anything before we move on? Any motion anything on no. that? No. <coughs> uh, next item 
is uh, the possible assistance to the city of Bowersville to do some road patching. <coughs> they have not officially requested this, but with all the rain we've had and the condition of their roads, uh, they've got roads coming apart, uh, alligator crumbling where sections of asphalt are coming out. Uh, and these are Hart County citizens and it's, it only makes sense to help them out. We keep tabs of the cost. Um, I guess I'll just lay it out there as that to help them out. Right. I think and, we and help them out. I'll make a motion we do. And, and the road, that I've rode and looked at them, mainly the East Main Street, <coughs> West Main Street. That's continuation of county roads. Uh, I haven't really rode and ridden a lot of the other city streets, but there is some, some places some, that need repairing on those roads. If we don't, it, it's going to come on apart. And it's just going to cost them money that they don't have. Exactly. Well, we, we agreed in June of 2017, I believe it was, to help them out with their roads. Right. And I think we set it up when we talked about that night. It's not in a minute, but for you and the mayor to get together and work the details. That's correct. That's correct. But we were talking about doing this. It, it, it really no charge to them because we won't have yeah. much well, invested in it. We, uh, I think the vote was that night is to furnish the labor. Labor I'm, I'm not against helping yeah. nobody out. Yeah, what I'm saying uh, is no more it's going to cost us to do it it's no big deal. Yep, I agree. This is, yeah, this county's reaching out. Uh, hasn't been requested. We're reaching out to help them because they do need, if you ride their roads, they are getting in pretty bad shape. Correct. Yeah, I mean, again, it's a continuation of our, all our other county traffic is up and down those roads. So. so we've got a motion and a second that we move forward with this and just, we'll have Terrell reach out to the uh, uh, mayor and um, clerk up there. And find out what they need. We're up in that area. We knock it out probably in a Correct. day anyway. Yeah. Uh, any more discussion? Who made uh, the motion, Marshall? I made the motion. I second. So, I see if anybody kept up with who was doing it. Mm -hmm. so yeah. I see if anybody else was keeping up with who was making the motions. I don't want to keep up with all that. <laughs> well, I, I try to jot it down. I can't read it after I write it, but I try to <laughs> jot it down. No, all right. I have a motion by Commissioner Sayer and second by Commissioner Teasley. Uh, any more discussion? Public comment. Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is the Georgia Soil and Water Conservation Commission Board of Elections Memorandum of Agreement Approval. Uh, that is a, you have a copy of it, I believe, in your packet. Um, we do. The um, Soil Conservation Service contacted uh, the Board of Elections and Registration, Board of Registration and Elections. <laughs> for assistance in um, handling that election, which is up this year in uh, November. And um, I know that from time to time that's been done. I haven't seen it in quite a long time, though. Maybe I just missed it. But I'm thinking that maybe, they, maybe the posts were not contested in the past or something. But um, Have we ever done that before? We have, but you know, it's been a long time ago. I don't, I don't remember in recent past ever seeing this on the ballot, but I know it has been in the past. Um, and they have asked us to do it. It's it, the only thing that I see in this agreement that would add anything to the cost, because you know, you, you've got uh, an election set for that time period anyway, and this is just a matter of one more uh, one more small uh, part on the ballot, and um, you know, since ballots aren't even really printed these days, it doesn't cost any more. Well, it probably wouldn't cost any more anyway, even if they were printed. The only thing that I can see that is a potential cost is that the um, requirement of qualification is also placed on the uh, the board, and that will require a, uh, the publication of a newspaper advertisement. How much those are, I don't know, it's but already it's, out there. pardon me? It's already out there. It is, all right. It's in the legals. It's a nominal cost. That's the only thing I see. I've talked to uh, the uh, chairman about it, and um, he's not chomping at the bit, but he understands that this may be something that has to happen. I right, could get a motion that uh, so move. We do this. Have a motion by Commissioner Carter. Is a second. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Sayer. Any more discussion? Public comment. 
So come to the podium, please. Um, we'll come to the podium. Yeah. Uh, just, a, just a point of correction. I believe your item 13E from the GSWCC has a date of March 2nd to 6th, 2018. That should say 2020. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. Sure do. That's the only point I wanted to make. Thank you. Good on here. Yeah, it's right back on the back. But on this hand, it says 2018. Probably an old one. Like me, patient copy a lot. Right. I lost my place. I had a motion by uh, Commissioner Carter, and second by Commissioner Sayer, that we move forward with to correct that date. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda is item 13F, a local state of emergency uh, resolution. It's got to be ratified by the full board. Uh, I was contacted by Terrell on a Thursday of last week when we had the, all the flooding and all that going on. Uh, we had to get on private property to get some people out. Uh, it was declared a, 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 an emergency, state of emergency. So uh, you can see I signed the resolution on the sixth day of February. And then uh, as part of our requirements from the county ordinance, the full board has to ratify this. So I could get a motion that we uh, uh, ratify this. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Carter and a second by Commissioner Teasley. Hey, one thing I'd like to say, mm -hmm. and I think I mentioned it a while ago, these, these people that let us get on that property to get some of their neighbors out, they was happy to do it. And, and But I will say this, when we get there to repair that pipe and fix it like it should be fixed, we may have to actually do that. I don't know how long it'll take to dig that thing. Uh, uh, this, this way this usually runs is for 30 days. Y'all ratify it tonight. If it don't expire, if I don't bring it up at the next meeting, it expires. If it has to go past that, I bring it back up, and y'all y'all renew it for another 30 days. That was written in our ordinance back a long time ago. Our only ordinance in the state that's got that in it, where y'all have to keep ratifying it. You have to keep bringing it up. And then there's another one that we're going to possibly have to get into if we can't work something out, and that's over on Deerfield. Uh, yeah, that that would be coming up. Uh, we can do that. With an agreement, we'd already talked about doing it with an agreement, but we can we can add it. If to it gets washed out, we may have to do the same thing. Exactly, so. exactly. Yeah, anytime we have to make a different circumstance, we have to redeclare it. This is sent to the state time it's signed, and there's a lot of red tape we go through to get this. But uh, if we're not finished with what we're doing in 30 days, I'll bring it back at that be first meeting in March and get y'all to renew it again for another 30 days. All right, I have a motion by Commissioner Carter, a second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? Public comment? If not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is public comment. If you'd like to address the board, if you'll come to the podium and state your name. Anybody for public comment? Anybody for public comment? Okay. If not, can I get a motion that we go into executive session for litigation, personnel, and real estate? I make a motion we go into executive session for personnel, motion motion by Commissioner litigation, Sayer. real estate. Second, second by Commissioner Teasley. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. 